Hey, what's up guys? So time to start taking a look at some of the cooling upgrade options here to help with overclocking the Nerd QX++ Revision 6. Now, there's many different variants of the Nerd QX line and the Plus Plus Revision 6 is my favorite version currently available. And you can check out my recent video that covers the different versions. In fact, it was one of these Nerd QX++ Plus Plus Revision 6s that recently hit a Bitcoin block and earned the owner the full Bitcoin block reward of over three Bitcoin. Now, with the default settings, you're going to be getting about 4.9 terahash here, but I've been running mine overclocked with the stock cooling at 6.5 terahash, and it's been handling it great. And part of the reason it's handling it here is the stock heatsink and fan are actually doing a really good job. Plus, with the Revision 6 here, the uh, voltage regulators are actually staying really cool stock without needing any additional heat sinks or anything. Plus, you can also get it with uh, an additional back fan here on the rear side to cool the uh, rear side of the ASICs underneath the main heat sink. Now, I actually want to try several different additional cooling upgrades here to this system. Now, the first thing I'm going to try is replacing this aluminum heat sink with a larger copper heat sink. Then I'm gonna upgrade the fan here in front of the heatsink with a much larger Noctua fan here like this to help with even more cooling. Plus we've got a special adapter that's gonna allow us to mount this larger fan to a smaller heatsink. It's made by Andreas here from Plebbase who's done a ton of experimentation and development. Plus you'll notice here that at the top of his 3D printed adapter, there's another exhaust right here, which is designed to actually help cool off those voltage regulators. The voltage regulators themselves have been staying cool, but as we continue pushing things, we're gonna have some additional fans here uh, covering the voltage regulators as well. And lastly, in addition to air cooling, I'm also gonna be testing water cooling. I'm gonna be taking my Nerd QX Plus Hydro. Turns out this is also compatible with the Nerd QX Plus Plus, and so I'm gonna be moving the cooling system here over to the Nerd QX Plus Plus Revision 6 to see if maybe water cooling is more effective than air cooling. I'm also curious about volume levels. This one does have two fans on it. Uh, there's one larger fan right here, uh, as well as a smaller one on the back side of the PCB. And so I also wanna test here with the volume levels with all of these different variants to see not only the cooling improvements, but also the volume differences with these different fan combinations. Now, in order to do any overclocking in the first place, we're also gonna have to upgrade our power supplies. The stock power supplies that these typically ship with are rated for about 120 watts or so, which is fine for running these at stock settings, but you're gonna be quickly going past the limits here when you get into overclocking and require more power. You're also not gonna to wanna to run these more than about 80% of maximum capacity, which is again why you're gonna be limited here with just stock settings. And so for that reason, I've also picked up an upgraded Meanwell power supply. I'm using the LRS350-12, which is a 12 volt power supply that can output up to 350 watts. And so even if I wanna run it at just 80% of maximum capacity, I've still got multiple outputs here for different nerd axes that I can connect to this. And obviously they make versions with uh, larger capacities too. Now I've also made two changes here. Here. Number one, the stock fan in this particular power supply is kind of loud, and so for that reason, I've swapped it out with a much quieter Noctua as well, which has been very helpful. Second, the different power terminals here actually don't come with a cover to protect them and prevent shorting or anything, and so for that reason, I've got this uh, just 3D printed cover here that I found online, and down in the video description, I'll link to all the different parts and components that I'm using here for not only the uh, power supply and upgrading the power supply, but also the Nerd QX and the different uh, fans and heat sinks and water cooling systems if you're interested in that too. And so with all that said now, let's go ahead and start uh, playing with different cooling combinations and see how they all compare. Now, diving into the testing, I discovered something in the process that I didn't expect that kind of affects the benefits here of these different cooling options. You see, in software, there's actually limits built in that limit how far you can overclock the Nerd QX++. You see, stock, it's set to run at 600 megahertz, but the highest frequency that it supports is 800 megahertz. And while you can choose higher options, it's not actually gonna hash any faster. This translates to a hash rate of about 4.9 terahash per second stock, or when overclocked to the max settings, you're looking at about six and a half terahash per second. And for safety reasons, they don't actually allow us to push any harder than that. And so for that reason, there may be less of a benefit to running with like crazy cooling options like this than I was expecting, but nevertheless, there actually are some benefits here to uh, beefing up the cooling uh, for your Nerd QX++. And starting off, let's begin here first with these stock cooling options. Now, it turns out this actually works great. You can run it not only stock, but also overclock to the max of six and a half terahash per second. And it works well even with stock cooling. Now that said, your mileage may vary. Some chips do handle overclocking a little bit better than others and temperatures will vary and whatnot. But again, I had good results here even with the stock cooling. 
And at the stock settings and hash rate, this stock cooler is basically silent here with the fan set to automatic and set to maintain a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius max. Now that said, once you start pushing it with overclocking, the fan does have to spin much faster to help keep the system cool. In fact, the fan will actually spin up to 100% of max speed. And at full speed, it's definitely noticeable. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's loud, but it's not at a volume level that I would want to run here in my office full time. And for reference, I'll actually list the fan's speed and volume level here on screen as I go through the different options. Again, your mileage may vary based on the silicone lottery and how your miner behaves, as well as ambient temperatures. Uh, for all of my testing, I'm doing it here in my office where temperatures are about 70 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. In practice though, I like to run all of my miners out in the garage where the temperatures can be much more extreme. And that's great in the winter time, but in the summer it can actually get pretty hot. And so having maybe extra cooling, especially in the summertime, can be very beneficial. And on that note, let's go ahead and start upgrading the cooling. And we'll begin here first with the upgraded big copper cooler. The fan is the same as before, though it is a different color, but it's otherwise still the same fan. It's really just the upgraded heatsink that we're gonna start testing here first. And with this larger heatsink, I find that the fan doesn't have to work as hard to keep the system cool, and so it can spin slower and keep the overall system quieter. At your stock settings of 4.9 terahash, it's again basically silent. And when you overclock it to 6.5 terahash, it does start to spin the fan faster, but it does still stay quieter than with the stock heatsink and fan. Now, something I noticed is that once I added the upgraded cooling to the ASICs, it then became the voltage regulators that would first hit that 60 degrees Celsius threshold and kind of became uh, the limiting factor. And then if I crank the fans up to 100% speed, then yes, the temperatures did go down about three degrees Celsius on the ASICs and five degrees on the voltage regulators. But again, because we've got the same stock fan as before, then the fan definitely becomes more clearly noticeable and honestly a bit annoying to run in practice. And for that reason, we can next take a look at how it performs here with both the upgraded heatsink and a larger upgraded fan. Plus, because this oversized fan covers more than just the heatsink itself, uh, this Helix Shroud actually has the separate exhaust right here to help blow some of the cold air on the voltage regulators too and keep them cooled off as well. And with this setup, it basically solves most all of the problems that I saw before. First off, with this larger fan, it can actually spin slower than before at about half the speed of the smaller fan. And for that reason, even with the fan set to 100% speed, the volume levels are barely noticeable here. Plus, it's able to cool both the ASICs and the voltage regulators, whether you're running it at the stock settings or whether you wanna overclock it. And personally, I'm really coming to appreciate cooling solutions that are both effective and quiet because as I continue acquiring more and more miners, I like having my entire mining setup not turn into something that sounds like a noisy server rack or something. And for that reason, this is definitely my preferred solution here when it comes to air cooling. Now, what about water cooling? How does that compare? And is that better than even air cooling? Well, starting things off at stock settings, it's again, nice and quiet here. Now that said, once you start getting into overclocking, it does start to get louder. You see, it's got a big fan for the radiator behind the miner, and with the fan set to auto, it definitely gets noisier here to cool the radiator as I'm trying to keep the miner below 60 degrees Celsius. And in this case, the fan itself is definitely noticeable. Then when I push it even harder and set the fan to 100% speed, it winds up being both loud and annoying. Surprisingly, comparing the Hydro to this uh, air-cooled solution here, this is both quieter and cooler than the water-cooled Hydro solution. So for these reasons, this is definitely my preferred solution when it comes to uh, keeping the miner cooler and also staying quiet in the process. Now that said, the Hydro version does have the cool LEDs that the air-cooled version doesn't have. But the cooling solution is more effective here air-cooled, and instead of being loud and annoying, the volume levels here are barely noticeable with the big fan and heatsink. Additionally, I also find that the Hydro does a better job of holding the miner in place, and I say that uh, because with this solution here, it does get a little bit front-heavy here like this because it's got uh, the bigger, beefier heatsink, it's got the shroud here, which is then gonna extend the bigger fan a little bit farther forward, so it does kind of tip forward like this, so you might have to be uh, careful here with uh, the case that you're using. In my case, I think it actually works a little bit better to mount it vertically here like this, so I've got a vertical configuration, kind of like the setup that we use here on the Ock Axe to cool the bit axes. 
But again, there's a variety of different approaches here. And with that in mind, what are my thoughts here on like the different cooling solutions? Well, honestly, I think the stock cooling solution for the Nerd QX++ Revision 6 is actually pretty excellent. I was surprised to find that you could overclock it to the maximum speed and it still did a good job of keeping the miner cool. Again, your results may vary based on the silicone lottery, but nevertheless, I find that it's not as necessary uh, to go for crazy cooling solutions here on the Nerd QX++ compared to what I see with the Bitaxis. That said, there still are some benefits to upgrading the cooling. Number one, it can be a bit noisy when you're running it at full fan speed, which can be sometimes necessary when you're gonna be overclocking. And so for that reason, if you prefer having a quieter cooling solution that can still keep your miner cooler, then upgrading the cooling solution and the fan could be better beneficial. Second, the extra cooling capabilities can also be helpful if you're going to be running it in a hotter environment. So if you're, say, running it outside or in a garage like me where it can get pretty hot, especially in the summertime, having the extra cooling can be pretty helpful. Now that said, for most people, it's probably not necessary to spend the extra expense and effort to upgrade the cooling. I would recommend having the rear cooler here on the miner, uh, but upgrading the heatsink and the fan and getting the shroud here to connect the two is probably not that necessary considering how good the stock cooler is here on the miner. Now, one thing that I definitely would recommend upgrading though, if you wanna get into overclocking is the power supply. These are really only designed to run the miners here at stock settings. And because you never wanna run them beyond about 80% capacity, or so, you're basically maxing out your power supply with your miner at stock settings. And so if you want to get into overclocking and requiring more power, you are going to need a beefier power supply. And your best bet here is going to be upgrading to a 12 volt Meanwell brand power supply. For example, you can pick up the 200 watt one, and this one is good for running two miners at stock settings or one miner overclocked. You can also consider upgrading to the 350 watt option, which is the one that I've been using here. And this will allow you to easily run two overclocked miners, though I do find that the power supply is going to be noisier. And so for that reason, I've upgraded the fan inside the power supply, which most people probably aren't going to want to do. And for safety reasons, definitely be careful here. And the uh, terminals here are exposed. And so for that reason, I also found this 3D printed adapter online that you can either print yourself or send out to a company to have them print for you. Alternatively, Solo Satoshi also sells a 600 watt cooler. And at the 80% threshold, you're looking at about 480 watts max, which translates to about five or nearly six miners running at stock settings or four miners running overclocked. Additionally, Solo Satoshi also sells the power cable that you're gonna need to connect the power supply to the wall. And they have some really nice long cables to connect to each one of your miners, which are definitely better than the short stubby cables that I picked up online uh, that I've been testing with. And so to summarize, if I was starting from scratch here, again, I think my preferred solution would be to get a Nerd QX++ Revision 6. I would add the rear fan to it if I was overclocking, but I wouldn't actually bother investing the time and energy to upgrade the main cooling solution because it is effective. If you do want a quieter fan solution though, you can go through the energy of upgrading the heatsink, upgrading the fan, and getting the shroud to connect the two. You can pick this up online as a 3D printed model, and you can either print it yourself or send it out to a company to print it for you. I use Jaws Tech, but there's a lot of companies, of course, that offer this capability. Then for thermal paste to connect the heatsink to the ASICs, I like the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme. Then to upgrade the power supply, at minimum, you're gonna want something like the 200 watt, 12 volt Meanwell. And again, this will work well for either two miners running at stock settings or one miner running overclocked. And then for the power cables and whatnot, you can order those from Solo Satoshi. But for not that much more money, you can actually order the 600 watt power supply. And this is gonna be helpful, especially if you wanna start getting into running multiple miners. You might wanna run just one miner out of the gate, but then later on, like me, you might wanna start picking up some additional miners to boost your hash rate. And having a larger power supply is gonna make it much easier to add additional miners down the line. And for all of the equipment that I talk about here in this video, the miners, the different cooling solutions, the cables, the power supplies, all that kind of stuff, I'll have links down in the video description for you so that you can check out all the different parts and components so that you can build something similar like this here for you. And with that said, thanks so much for watching. If uh, you're running a miner like this, I would love to hear your results as well on uh, you know, the different options that you're running, what cooling solutions you're using, what overclocking settings that you're using. I know there's also new versions of the miner coming out like the Nerd QX, for example, which is essentially an upgraded version of the Nerd QX++ that does not have the software limitations that prevent how far you can overclock. So you can actually overclock even farther. And it also has some additional hardware improvements that's gonna make it a little bit safer to push it 
it harder too. And I'll put some links down in the description below for more information about these miners as well. But I think the sweet spot right now is gonna be the standard NerdQX++ Revision 6 with the rear fan and the stock front cooler and with an upgraded power supply if you wanna get into overclocking. And with all that in mind, Thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date as more and more videos like this here go live. In fact, while I was shooting this video, the new Canon Mini 3 just arrived. <laughs> so stay tuned uh, for some videos about this minor slash heater as well. And again, thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one.